this session is um, basically Lauren Hasgo. She'll be taking this session on AI um, for the Great Barrier Reef. So please make her feel welcome as she comes out on stage. Good morning. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we are meeting on, the Ngunnawal people. We acknowledge and pay our respects to their continuing culture and the contribution they make to the life of this city and this region. We also acknowledge and welcome other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are present today. Hello and welcome to our breakout session where well, we will be discussing how the Australian Institute of Marine Science are using artificial intelligence and the cloud to protect the Great Barrier Reef. My name is Lauren Hausko, and I'll be introducing you to David Crossman from the Australian Institute of Marine Science. Together, we will explore how AIMS are saving time and money on AWS to benefit one of our greatest natural wonders. Today, David and I will take you through the problem that the Australian Institute of Marine Science have been able to solve with AWS. I will give a brief overview of who AIMS are and what they do. David will then contextualize the problem as a data problem and why this is so. He will then dive into the projects that AIMS have been working on, the technical detail behind the solution, and where AIMS are planning to go to next with their AWS solutions. By the end of this half hour, you will have an excellent understanding of how AWS is helping customers like Ames achieve amazing results that will have an incredibly positive impact on our world. The Great Barrier Reef provides enormous economic, environmental, and societal benefits, not only to Australia, but to the world. There are three main economic sectors that benefit from coral reefs. This is tourism, coastal development, and commercial fisheries. All three will experience significant contraction as the coral crisis worsens. Hundreds of millions of people rely on coral reefs for nutrition, medicine and healthcare, recreation, and livelihoods of coastal communities. Australia is a marine nation, with 85% of the population living on the coastal fringe and a maritime industry worth 68 billion per annum. Reefs are a critical resource for many countries, reliant on for food security and a significant portion of GDP and standard of living. Covering less than 1% of the ocean floor, reefs host more than a quarter of all marine fish species. Reefs are vital for coastline and flooding protection, providing risk reduction benefits to 197 million people facing natural disasters. So to preserve these benefits, it's important to sustain coral reef ecosystems. Coral reefs are increasingly under pressure. Human-induced climate change is taking coral reefs out of their comfort zone, where they have thrived for hundreds of thousands of years. Australia's tropical marine ecosystems, like the Great Barrier Reef, are experiencing the consequences of climate change. Now, due to climate change, Ames research reveals there will be increased occurrences of mass bleaching events across multiple reefs at the same time. Climate change is predicted to affect tropical marine systems in the following ways. Warmer sea surface temperatures will increase the risk of heat stress events and mass coral bleaching. Tropical cyclones are likely to be more intense, resulting in physical destruction and weakening of the reef structure. Extreme rainfall events will increase, with larger amounts of low salinity fresh water and sediment extending further out from the coast. Sea levels will gradually rise, affecting coastal erosion, the magnitude of storm surges and the available area for shallow water marine organisms. And lastly, ocean circulation and upwelling patterns will change. AWS is committed to helping customers architect sustainably, and we have a huge list of sustainability initiatives that you can read about on our website. 
We're excited to be working with the Australian Institute of Marine Science by helping them to protect the Great Barrier Reef, not only now, but well into the future. As we move into the amazing work being carried out by the Australian Institute of Marine Science, I'd like to highlight the definition of sustainability. The definition is the ability to meet the needs of today without compromising the needs of tomorrow. But there's quite a lot to unpack in that statement, so I prefer this quote from one of the world's greatest communicators, Sir David Attenborough. Anything that we can't do forever is, by definition, unsustainable. The Australian Institute of Marine Science is Australia's tropical marine research agency. They play a pivotal role in providing large-scale, long-term and world-class research that helps governments, industry and the wider community to make informed decisions about the management of Australia's marine estate. They're a Commonwealth statutory authority. Their mission is to provide research and knowledge of Australia's tropical marine estate required to support growth in its sustainable use, effective environmental management, and protection of its unique ecosystems. The research leads to improved marine health and resilience, creates economic, environmental, and societal benefits, and protects reefs from climate change. The Australian Institute of Marine Science are headquartered in Townsville, and they celebrate their 50th anniversary this year. As well as being an organisation focused on research which supports the knowledge around climate change, the Australian Institute of Marine Science is also well on its way to reducing their carbon footprint with numerous internal initiatives. AIMS' solar array generates around 1,000 kilowatts per hour, reducing the Institute's carbon footprint by about 15%, or roughly 1,500 tonnes of CO2 emissions per year. Not only does the system deliver environmental benefits, but it also delivers significant cost savings every year, which means the Australian Institute of Marine Science can put more money back into research. By running on AWS, AIMS can run the same workload with an 88% lower carbon footprint. Now, there are three main factors for this. The first is what we call PUE, which is power usage effectiveness. A standard enterprise data center will be running at a PUE of approximately 1.7. A hyperscaler cloud environment like AWS will run at approximately a PUE of 1.2. So the closer you get to one, the better. This means that the energy that comes into the data center is used for compute rather than ancillary things such as cooling. The second factor is carbon intensity, which is the energy mix between the energy production, the carbon intensive energy production, and renewable energy production. And then the third factor is compute density. AWS data centers use machine learning algorithms developed over a number of years to optimize, uh, to optimize how we run um, our workloads. So a traditional data center will be running at approximately 20% capacity to allow for spikes in usage. An AWS data center is able to run at 66% capacity or higher, meaning that we are far more effective in the way that we use our energy. So by simply making the decision to move from traditional on-premise data centers to the AWS cloud, AIMS are once again well on their way to reducing their carbon footprint. The newly introduced customer carbon footprint tool that's built into the console is a great source of information for organizations to see how changes they make to their architecture can have an impact on their overall carbon footprint. As you can see here, the Australian Institute of Marine Science had a drop in January 2021, and this is likely due to a few factors. The main contributor is switching some large elastic beanstalks and serverless functions, such as lambdas. AIMS also scaled down some other Beanstalk and EC2 instances from development accounts out of hours when development work was unlikely to occur. I'd now like to introduce you to David Crossman, product owner for the data systems engineering team at the Australian Institute of Marine Science. David and the team have been working on a huge range of exciting research data systems initiatives using AWS. David will be deep diving into a few of the projects specifically focusing on Reef Cloud, what the project is, how they're solving with sustainable AWS architecture, and how data is the central factor to achieving their aims. Please make David welcome.
Thank you, Lauren, for that wonderful introduction. AIMS collect data to monitor coral reef systems, water quality, weather and ocean conditions, and other things like large marine animals across Australia's tropical marine waters using two research vessels, state-of-the-art aquarium facilities, and by employing next-generation sensors, machine learning, robotics, autonomous systems to enhance marine research and monitoring. We work collaboratively with experts from around the world to share data, knowledge, and information. This, in turn, is used by governments as a foundation for environmental policy providing the most effective levers to pull to maintain the sustainable use of marine ecosystems. However, there are challenges in collecting data in the field. The Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest coral reef, covering an area one and a half times the size of Victoria. The vast distances and area involved means that while Ames research vessels spend most of the year at sea, they can only survey a very small percentage of the GBR each year. All this leads to very expensive, and time-consuming data collection efforts that aren't very scalable, particularly for reef surveys. Ames research vessels visit around 120 reefs per year, which is less than 5% of the total number of reefs on the Great Barrier Reef. We can't monitor all of the reef, but we can choose a representative sample. Regular reef surveys are an important method to understanding changes in reef condition. Ames repeatedly survey the same reefs and sites to understand these changes. On 75 of these reefs, trained observers on scuba take photographs, covering a total of 750 metres across three permanently marked sites on each reef. Those same observers then observe each image manually, assessing what is in that image. Very clearly, the manual collection and analysis of coral reef imagery limits the amount of data that can be collected, not just for Ames and the Great Barrier Reef, but for all researchers and countries surveying their own reef habitats. The Reef Cloud project looks to overcome some of these scalability issues by automating the analysis of coral reef imagery using artificial intelligence. We aim to deliver an end-to-end -end monitoring solution to partners in the Pacific and around the world. That standardizes and dramatically speeds up reef data analysis, and that will ultimately lead to better sustainability outcomes. Users can simply upload images taken from their reef surveys. ReefCloud then automates image analysis with machine learning. It can replicate expert observations with high confidence, producing accurate estimates of coral reef composition 700 times faster than manual assessment. The architecture makes use of AWS serverless and managed services. Researchers can upload imagery collected in the field, and then ReefCloud uses recognition to identify around 7 million different parameters from the color, size, and shape of the coral. Most of the heavy lifting, like the extraction of features from imagery and inferencing using AI, is performed by AWS Batch. We can process 300,000 features per hour which is 700 times faster than existing manual processes, and it's fully automated from when the user uploads their imagery. The pipeline can inference the entire data set in minutes. Previously on premise, this would have taken us days or even weeks to run. ReefCloud promotes the integration of monitoring efforts to inform evidence-based management decisions. The data is aggregated in a standardized manner across predefined marine eco-regions or boundaries, and it's presented for public consumption via a dashboard. We use AWS step functions to orchestrate statistical models run on AWS Fargate. These present data at different spatial levels, whether it be at site or regional, like for a country. Let's take a bit of a closer look, though. AWS enables us to process our monitoring data at scale. The data is stored in Amazon RDS Postgres instance. AWS Lambda is used to upload imagery to Amazon S3. Messages are then stored on a FIFO queue containing image metadata on Amazon SQS. To increase throughput on the queue, we process multiple images in a single message. This works well for a typical use case for the collection of field data, where a researcher collects data over a period of time, returns to base, and then uploads large batches of imagery. 
Our AI models are trained by reef ecologists who typically classify five points on an image. Artificial intelligence then derives an additional 45 data points. AWS provides the compute power to process that data in a timely fashion. These two things combined make for faster, more effective decisions that are driven by increased levels of data. We can inference AIM's historical monitoring data more than 30 years worth in minutes. But there is a slight catch. Before we inference, we must use AWS Batch to index features from each point on each image. This is the most intensive compute and time operation in our pipeline. We selected Batch for this task as it can handle the scale, and more importantly, it allows the process to run for longer periods for a decent price. We create nearly all of our infrastructure with code using AWS Cloud Development Kit. CDK makes it easy to automate and tear down environments and gives us the flexibility to test and trial in sandbox environments. Our indexing batch job mentioned before is made up of 30 C5 instances. The batch job is then started from a simple Lambda. It's triggered from an event rule set in Amazon EventBridge. The Lambda checks if there are any messages on the queue. If so, indexing occurs. From there on, we can train and re-inference the entire data set with a new model in a matter of minutes. We then collaborated with teams of data scientists who created statistical models to process and aggregate the data based on spatial regions and covariate data. These models are pushed to Amazon ECR directly and and from a Git repo. We then run the models using AWS, AWS serverless infrastructure on AWS Fargate. The inputs and outputs of the model are orchestrated in a workflow using AWS step functions. We can then visualize the environmental data spatially in the dashboard, namely thermal stress and cyclones. These are two disturbances that have documented effects on coral reefs. These disturbances can then be cross-referenced with spatial layers to determine the impact on individual reefs and regions. Large data, spot, large data and spatial files are migrated between source and destination locations using AWS DataSync. Data is then processed into usable formats by using serverless functions written in Python. The resulting data is then stored in a Postgres Amazon RDS and made available through RESTful services using Amazon API Gateway. ReefCloud uses those statistical models to analyze the abundance of reef organisms, harnessing, harnessing machine learning techniques. These smart models account for differences in survey methods, spatial representation of surveys, and uncertainty from image analysis. They provide a robust synthesis on the status and trends of coral reefs. The dashboard itself is an AWS Amplify application, allowing for easy connection to AWS services like Amazon Cognito for authentication and authorization, and Amazon S3 for storage. All this provides for an effective technical solution that also provides relevant information to researchers to make informed decisions about reef ecosystems. ReefCloud's automated image analysis can replicate results with high confidence. In general terms, by using artificial intelligence, the system more than doubles the information collected from each image. And in many cases, there is up to 10 times more information collected from each image. Processing is up to 700 times faster when compared to traditional methods. A typical year's worth of imagery from AIMS can be processed in about an hour, allowing for significant upscaling of data collections. The consistency of the data across teams and organizations allows for data from many contributors around the world to be combined easily into global reports. We favor managed services so we don't need to manage these things ourselves. It increases the robustness of the system while lowering ongoing maintenance costs, particularly when concerned with security and upgrade patches. It also means the development team can focus more on coding solutions rather than setting up or implementing this infrastructure. All of our instances in the pipeline use spot pricing, reducing our compute costs by around 65%. Our run times are kept at efficient levels, resulting in a costing model that allows us to share the infrastructure with core partners. With serverless architectures, you only pay for what you use, which fits well with our data collection and processing use patterns, where data are processed upon return to shore and then sit idle. 
This also plays well into our sustainability considerations. Reef Cloud builds upon years of AIMS research, investigating how corals respond to changing environments. AIMS are developing next generation technology to scale up and revolutionize our marine monitoring and science programs. We are building automated vehicles and platforms to collect more imagery to feed into Reef Cloud. Using remote services like AWS Snowball, we then hope to bring these components of Reef Cloud to researchers working in situ in the field. These areas are often have limited connectivity, which Snowball had add, add, added benefits to. This brings Reef Cloud to the edge of coral reef monitoring and offers the potential to deliver near real-time answers to researchers about coral reef health. This can then be complemented with other research data, including experimental research conducted in our National Sea Simulator facility based in Townsville. Using AI and cloud technologies, Reef Cloud, the National Sea Simulator, and other emerging solutions are helping researchers all over the world understand complex marine ecosystems to discover the best ways to help them adapt to climate change and other pressures, allowing marine biologists to focus on critical, big picture tasks, such as developing methods to help our coral reefs resist, adapt to, and recover from the impacts of climate change. I'm now going to hand you over to Lauren, who's going to talk a little bit more about some of the initiatives that AWS have on offer. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dave. It's really wonderful to see all the tremendous work that the Australian Institute of Marine Science are doing to help our Great Barrier Reef adapt into the future all while using cutting-edge AWS technologies. If anyone watching would like to learn more or get started on AWS, you can scan the QR codes on the screen. The first link is to our Sustainability in the Cloud website, and it's full of useful blog posts and resources that you can read about and learn from. It also has information on the Amazon Sustainability Data Initiative. The second link, Technologies for Sustainability, helps you get started using sustainable architectures on AWS and lists a huge range of use cases um, that you can explore. They're both terrific resources, and I really encourage you to take a look. You can find out more information about the recently re released Sustainability Well-Architected Pillar. Sustainability is the newest pillar to the Well-Architected Framework. The pillar enhances the framework to provide a way for you to consistently measure architectures against best practices and identify areas for improvement. And over time, it also helps us do our part to mitigate the climate crisis. Sustainability is a broad field, covering social, environmental, and economic aspects. Now, this pillar specifically focuses on the environmental impacts, especially energy consumption and efficiency. As this is an important lever architects have to improve and reduce resource usage. As Peter DeSanta said at reInvent in 2020, the greenest energy is the energy you don't use. The sustainability pillar focuses on understanding, understanding the impacts of services being used, quantifying them through the entire workload life cycle and to take action by applying best practices to reduce the impacts of your workloads. To find out more information, you can simply go to Google and type in AWS Well-Architected Sustainability Pillar. To continue on your cloud journey, please use these training resources. The Australian Institute of Marine Science are an excellent example of a customer who have really utilized these resources for their own internal staff training. This has helped them accelerate their AWS skills and thus be highly self-sufficient with the technologies. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. We really hope you learned something valuable. And uh, we do have a small amount of time if anyone does have any questions, so we'll be happy to take those. Thank you. Thanks. 
Um, a question for David. How long has ReefCloud been around um, and who are the kind of people who are utilising the data that's coming out of that so far? Yeah, so ReefCloud is jointly funded by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and AIM, so funding for that started about two years ago. So it's been around for about two years. Um, we did our first public release in, in April in Palau at the Palau Institute of Coral Reef Center. The who's using Reef Cloud, um, being, being funded jointly with DFAT, it's, its primary use at the moment is, is the Pacific and, and Australia. So we're working quite closely with, with partners in Palau, Fiji, uh, the Maldives. So difficult places to work. Um, but also in our, own, in our own country, so like I said today, the, the, the Great Barrier Reef is, is a large monitoring area. Um, and we hope to expand that to other areas in the world as well. So targeted areas are areas like the Caribbean, for example. There's a large coral reef system there. Um, other areas of Asia, like the Philippines, for example. Anyone else? I think there's one over there. Yeah, fantastic presentation. That was really good. Um, two questions. The front end, I might have missed what, what actually was the front end. You mentioned favouring managed services. Um, second question, what's the next step? So monitoring is getting your base, and then what's going to happen next? OK, so first question. Um the front end is actually two parts. So there's, there's what we call a data portal, which is more for the users and researchers to use. So it's for uploading imagery. It's for adding image metadata, those sorts of things, um, managing their surveys. And that's where a lot of the standardization comes from. So it's, it's really about getting the same data from different users into a single format. And then there's also what we call a public dashboard, which is the, the latter sort of screens that you saw with the cyclones and things like that. So that's, that's the same data, but it's aggregated up. We use some fairly fancy st st statistical models to present that data. And that's publicly available. So anybody can go and have a look at that now. It's, it's on the web. You can go to reefcloud.ai and, and check it out. Um, and the second question, sorry, was? Oh, the next steps. Yeah, sorry. So like I said in the talk, um, one of our major issues is, is the amount of information and data that we have. It's, it's not just an issue we have at Ames, but it's a, it's a global issue with monitoring. So our next steps, having analyzed and, and automated that analysis now somewhat, we can move towards collecting information with, with new, new methods. So we can look at things like AUVs, for example. So we have, at Ames, we're trialing a transom camera, which is a, a camera that sits on the the bottom of a vessel. You can then drive the boat over the reef, collects a lot of imagery. We can load that into Reef Cloud and then process that data as well, like we would have with our traditional monitoring methods. So they're, they're probably our next thing. From an AI perspective, our next steps are probably looking at different methods of, of annotating and analyzing that imagery. So we're looking at whole image annotation, for example. So rather than looking at those points that I showed on the screen, it'll actually be the entire image. Um, and, and I think that's a useful step for, for, for certainly the machine learning space. Any other questions? I think that's probably it. That's Thank it. you so much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>